Okay, and welcome back to segment two. Um, so at the end of segment one, um, we were going over the answers and practicing vocab for the listening. Uh, so I hope that it was good practice for listening and that you could also uh, listen again on your own. And I also gave you a challenge to look at page 114 in the workbook to do a little bit more practice on your own uh, with vocabulary and listening practice. Uh, so you may know that uh, the answers are in the back of your workbook. However, let's maybe quickly go over um, page 114. And uh, hopefully you have already paused to do this uh, homework on your own in the workbook. And let's go over these answers together to check. So um, looks like this, uh, unit 10, free time, page 114. So let's go over the answers. Fabiola has three days off next week. She wants to go on vacation. She went on the internet and found some good discounts on flights to Washington, D.C. She can get a round trip ticket for $95 if she books her flight five days ahead. The flight takes one hour. It leaves at 2 o'clock p.m. on Monday, and the flight leaves Washington, D.C. at 11 o'clock a.m. on Wednesday. The hotel costs $120 a night plus tax, which is $14.50 per night. Okay, we mentioned that uh, about San Francisco having a high room tax. And unfortunately, in the U.S., uh, many hotels do not tell you about the room tax if you book online. But it is often something like this. Okay, uh, next paragraph. If she takes the train, the trip will take three hours. The train leaves at 8 o'clock a.m. on Monday, and the return train leaves Washington, D.C., at 6 o'clock p.m. on Tuesday. She does not need two, okay, remember infinitives, two plus a verb. She does not need to reserve a hotel room for two nights. Now, I wanna talk about this because books and reserve are similar definition. However, books, the verb tense is different here, or rather the form. If you notice, the uh, number six is the infinitive form, to plus a verb. We have a clue in front of the blank, so we need to choose the base form of the verb. However, books with an S indicates present tense, and so that's why we chose books for number four. Okay, moving on. The train costs $175, but she can stay just one night and still have two full days of sightseeing. Okay, so this is about a trip to Washington, D.C. And previously, we talked about San Francisco. So which place would you prefer to visit? <laughs> and would you choose to travel by plane or train. So let's go to exercise two very quickly. We have cost of transportation, cost of lodging, and total cost. On the left side, we have by plane or by train. So what about by plane? The cost is, we have the answer, $95. What about by train? So using this information above, what's the answer? $175 by train. Interesting. 
Okay, cost of lodging for a plane. All right, by plane, $269. Okay, and the total cost, $364. By train, the cost of lodging, $134. And the total cost, $309. Okay, so finally the train was less expensive, but what would you choose? What's your preference for travel? Okay, exercise three is a matching exercise, so let's check that together quickly. Number one, we have the answer, which is D. Number two, you should book a flight in advance. What do you think? C to get the best discounts. And what about three? The advertised room rate, B, does not usually include tax. So unfortunately, we mentioned that before. Number four, many tourists, only one answer, come here during the summer. Okay, so a little bit more practice with vocabulary and listening. So I hope that it was um, another good chance to practice for you. So um, at this time, let's transition to exercise B, lesson B, sorry, in our green student book. And before we jump into lesson B, let me um, point your attention to the board behind me. Oh, sorry, the sunlight is coming in. Okay, um, lesson B, we're talking about future real conditionals. What's the meaning of the word conditional? It's describing something that is not definite, not 100%. And we often use conditionals to talk about or use with future tense. So will the weather be good tomorrow? Maybe yes, maybe no. So um, we often use it if we don't know exactly about something in the future. So let me give you one example behind me, and I hope you can see clearly. Okay, let me move this a little bit forward. That's better. Okay, good. If the virus ends soon, I will visit my family in Tennessee. Okay, now let me point out to you that this sentence contains two verb tenses. So first, do you notice the verb here, ends, has an S. Usually the S attached to a verb indicates what tense? Simple present. Okay, now you notice that I put brackets around this phrase because this is the conditional clause. Okay, remember that a clause is a group of words together, usually containing a subject and a verb. So what's the subject here? The virus. What's the verb? Ends. Okay, do you notice the comma? So in this sentence, if, the conditional word goes first. So we need to have a comma because this phrase, this clause is dependent on the next clause. Or we could say the main clause or the main idea. And what's the main idea for me? I will visit my family in Tennessee. I hope. Okay, so here we have, do you notice, will? Will indicates future tense, future time. All right, um, now, could we switch this order? 
So we have talked about before, we can switch the order uh, with and keep the same meaning. So um, let's switch it. I will visit my family in Tennessee if the virus ends soon. So if we put if in the middle, no comma, okay? We have talked about this before in the past. All right, so I wanted to give you one example to give a little bit more instruction. And now uh, let's go to the book, the green student book, okay? I'm gonna grab my book here. Um, let's look together at a few more examples at the top. Okay, now also you may notice, I wanna point your attention to the Q Reader watch. So take advantage of this and watch the small instructional video to get some more help and information. So example one, if the fare is cheap enough, comma, we will fly. So the clause is, the conditional clause is first, beginning with if, so we need a comma, and second, we have the main clause. The main clause is what tense? Future, will fly. The conditional clause with if is what tense? Simple present. Okay, next example, we switch the order. We will fly if the fare is cheap enough. If the fare is cheap enough. Okay, another example. If the weather is bad, she won't go swimming. And below, she won't go swimming if the weather is bad. Same sentence, different order. Okay, now won't stands for will not, so it's still future tense. Okay, another example. If they get off from work, comma, they will visit their relatives in California. Okay, switch. They will visit their relatives in California if they get time off from work. All right, so I hope these examples help a little bit. And so now let's take this chance to do a little bit more practice. Uh, practice two below. The directions are a little bit more complex. We need to complete the sentences use and decide, we have to choose with simple present or future verb form, and then circle the future conditional clause. So the clause containing if. Example one, Annette and William will take their children to see adventure next month if William gets a few days off. Okay, you notice that uh, Annette and William, this is the main clause, the main action in this sentence. So we need to use future tense, add will. Okay, with if, if William gets, this is simple present tense. Okay, and then we will circle that clause if William gets a few days off. Okay, now, how about at this time, you can pause the video and try to finish this on your own, and then let's come back together and check it. Okay, all right, number two. If they get a discount, okay, it's a simple present. So this is the conditional clause, no change, get. 
they will reserve a room at a hotel. So this is easy in that for future, we only need to add will. Number three, we have the be verb. So what is be verb in present tense? Okay. Uh, if price says, this is plural, so what do we need? Are too high, comma, they will not or won't take an expensive vacation. All right, number four. We will have a picnic on Saturday if it does not rain or doesn't rain. Number five, if you, okay, we have give, so what's the present form? No change. If you give me the money, I will buy the concert tickets. And number six, if you come to Chicago, comma, we will meet you at the airport. Number seven, they will fly to Miami next month if they find a cheap flight. Okay, it's a good review for simple present tense, isn't it? And number eight, we, we have not and go. We will not go or we won't go camping if the weather, okay, be verb, and we need present tense, is too hot. Number nine, okay, now we have rain. How do we make it present tense? Because we have the conditional clause first. If it rains, comma, we will have the party inside. And number 10, if she needs a rental car, she will look for one online. How did you do? How do you feel? Uh, easy, difficult, or so-so? Okay. So I think the important thing is that we practice and we need to do speaking practice. So why don't we go to the next page? Let's look at uh, exercise B and you will notice a lot of pictures here. And we're going to talk about John. Now the condition we are not sure about is the weather. What will John do if the weather is good or bad? Okay, so uh, let's look at picture one. Two options, play soccer or watch a movie. So let's make a question first. What will John do? Information question, right? What will John do if the weather is good? Okay, now the book gives a simple answer. I challenge you to give a complete answer. So he'll play soccer, he will play soccer. Or if the weather is good, comma, John will play soccer. Okay, how about we try um, the opposite side? What will John do if the weather is not good or isn't good? Okay, he'll watch a movie. If the weather is not good, comma, John will watch a movie. Okay, so remember he'll, H-E apostrophe L-L, means he will, he'll. Um, so sometimes in the spoken English, he'll go there, he'll go there. It almost sounds like H-I-L-L, -L, the pronunciation. He'll go to, he'll watch a movie. Okay, so um, how about 
you can continue on your own. We have a few more pictures here to examine. Ask a question, give an answer, practice making the conditional clause. And maybe you can practice switching, switching the order of the conditional clause, okay? And uh, one thing to point out to you is we have another communicate exercise right here. So call your conversation partner, have a video chat, or talk with someone nearby at home. And um, also, um, let me point out to you just a moment. Um, this sheet. Okay, I have printed what the example here. This is the listening worksheet with if clauses. So um, I hope that you were able to print, uh, first of all, receive this document. And if you do not have a printer at home, maybe you can just uh, pull up the document on your phone and use that in the next exercise because we're going to do something for a little more interest um, and listen to some music to practice the if clauses. Okay, see you soon.